Now, of course, we just kind of continue on. The news of the day, Daryl Sutter is out, fired as the head coach of the Calgary Flames. 64 years old this year, 37, 28, and 17. 17 extra time losses. You wonder, there again, if you get a couple more goals and saves, are we? where are we sitting right now? They started 5-1, and one, then lost 7 straight, and it just never, they had no traction from then on. It's his second go-around in Calgary. You can see it there the uh, over the last three seasons. Also, going back to 03 to 06 was the head coach, then left the bench and went up as GM. Regular season head coaching record, three, a 737, 530, and 101. It's a lot. What it means is he is ninth all-time in wins. He is ninth all-time in games coached. And with two Stanley Cups, I would think this is a Hall of Fame uh, coach, regardless whether he coaches another game in his life or not. He is the reigning Jack Adams Trophy winner. Which the Flames? Uh, How many times has that happened? Bob Hartley. Well, yeah, Bob Hartley twice he here, the, uh... but it, does it happen yeah. in other places too? It feels like it's maybe not. It's like being on the cover of the of the the video game, game. The and then you lose game. that year or the President's Trophy. But that, yeah, and then you're out of a job. I don't know. Next year. Yeah. Uh, speaking of stuff like that, where people, where you think you're doing really good, and then all of a sudden you're not doing so good. How about uh, what happened yesterday? A couple of absolute stunners in the NHL playoffs. Boston, Colorado are out. The Bruins, it's got to be the biggest shocker in NHL history. 43-point differential in the regular season between Florida and Boston. The Bruins lost on home ice seven times all season, and then three in the playoffs versus Florida. It's un I don't know how... I mean, you picked them, but I have to... I think that was partly your, uh, you know, Panther... Once a Panther, Undef a Panther. That the Panthers happened? are undefeated, undefeated against the Bruins in the playoffs. There you have it. Best regular season record in NHL history. President's trophy led the series three games to one, had a three, two lead with a minute left in the third, but Ooh. Carter Verhage turned out the lights. His second of the playoffs in overtime Panthers take it in seven. And everybody wanted to know we all, if you're watching the game, you saw how it all played out. You know our buddy Jack Edwards. Of course, he bleeds Boston blue. He loves the Bruins. He must have been taking this one hard. Here's the call from our buddy Jack. On him. Verhage wins the series for Florida. And this joyride ends in a Hindenburg-like ending. The Bruins are the second record-setting team in a row to drop the series in the first round. Mm -hmm. What? It's almost like he wasn't prepared for Boston to lose that thing. Oddly. I bet you if they'd have won, he'd have had something very, uh, oh, very, very succinct. Tight. And oh yeah, it would have been great. But there you see it. Brandon Montour with a pair of goals for Hagee. Now, for Hagee's quite a story. Third round pick of Toronto in the 2013 draft. Spent some time in the East Coast League and in the AHL. Broke into the NHL in the 1920 season with Tampa Bay. Wins the Cup. Then signs with Florida. He's there three years. His totals went from 18 to 24 to 42. Remember last year in Washington, there was also a Game 7 OT winner. Guess who scored it? Carter Verhage. This guy's got balls. So Florida, and, and one, one last thing on Verhage. They've won eight playoff games in the last two seasons. Verhage has the game winner in five of them. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Are, okay, I wanted to ask you a question. Swayman. Is that? Well, yeah. Do you it applaud felt, it? Or uh, you... It, it felt like the right move, to be honest. It kind of did. It's not like you were going to some unknown backup. They had they had split some time. Allmark was tremendous, but Swayman was. Uh, I mean, it's hard to hard to defend it now. But if you went to Allmark again and you lose, everyone would. Well, why wouldn't you have gone to to Swayman? Did you not have any any trust in him? What did you think? I thought again, easy today to say, but I would have played him in Game Six in Florida. Ah, uh, yeah. 
I just, you couldn't have expected any of it. No. And for yeah, for Jim Montgomery, for all those players, to, to go back after a game five or whatever and think, we, we better really think about who we're starting in net. <laughs> it was, we're finding a way. Like Florida's good. We know they're good, but we're going to find a way. Um, emotions high afterwards for Captain Patrice Bergeron. And I don't know if you, you saw this, but um, some thought he might have been done at the end of last season. You have to wonder as you watch the emotions here with David Krejci and then, of course, with Brad Marchand. It feels like teammates for life. This looks like a guy who's played his last game, don't you think? Sure does. I think I'm froze up there, but yeah. It, uh, when I saw that hug, I when all the other hugs, I wasn't thinking too much about it. But that one to me said, it's lights out. Yeah. So a, uh, that is going to feel like a, it's going to feel like a uh, long summer. I think well, they had probably the put like, off a lot of vacation plans. They'd have held off yeah. doing all kinds of stuff with family. Mm. The emotional awkwardness that they're waking up with this morning. That's We lost to Anaheim that year where we won the division or whatever it was. And then you lose in game seven and you wake up the next day and you go, ooh, this, this was not part of the plan at all. Like, we're supposed to have two months more of hockey. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? And I'll bet you if I'm a Boston Bruin, I'm guessing they did much like we did. Get the hell out of town. Like, not hanging around in Boston to get heckled by everybody. Man. First round. Also shocking, but not to that level, because I don't know if there's ever been one quite to that level. The Avalanche are done. They fall to Seattle in Game 7 by a score of 2-1. to one. Philip Grubauer getting it done against his former team, Oliver Bjorkstrand, with a pair of goals. So, we're almost now set for round number two tonight. There you have it. Nathan McKinnon, a goal disallowed for offside. I I, I, I had the I think Seattle seven. deserved yeah, but I think yeah, Seattle they deserves this win. They played hard. I, like I said it a week ago, I hadn't really watched them uh, or paid attention to them. I watched them in this series, and they were flying. They were the more aggressive team. They were the team playing with pace. They were the team playing with determination. They they, they deserved that win. Yeah. You almost wonder if they're the Vegas Golden Knights just one year later. Right, that expansion team, and then they everything comes together at the right time, and they play their balls off. And anyway, happy for them. Uh, tonight, it is the final game of round number one. It's a game seven. After going down two games to none, New Jersey won the next three, and then it was the Rangers staving off elimination. So the winner will move on and play Carolina. Game time is uh, six o'clock local time here, and there you see it. Nine points, six goals for Chris Kreider. He's been great. Fox over a point a game. So do you have a Akira Schmid came in. He's been great for New Jersey and net. You got a vibe for tonight? I have no vibe. I thought the Rangers had this one wrapped up after winning the first two in New Jersey. And then I thought Jersey had it all the way yeah. back when they go up three games to two. So I'm a little, I, she's a coin flip right now. I'll tell you what, you know what? What hurt, at least from where I'm, where I'm sitting, what hurt this series in in terms of my enjoyment of it was the two nothing lead and convincingly so by the Rangers. I just shifted off my focus and started watching other series. We felt like this was going to be a hell of a series coming in, and it's going to seven games. It's just not really hmm, kind of how we thought it was going to go. Um, what do we know about round number two? Tuesday, the Leafs will open against Florida at home. Seattle will head to Dallas. And the other two series, Edmonton, Vegas, and then Carolina versus the Devils or Rangers will go on Wednesday. There you have it. Oh, yeah, and the Leafs one. Did you hear about that? Oh, they advanced. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. Did you, uh, before, yeah, I know, before we move on, I had the video of Jordan Eberle. Did you see or have thoughts on this one? The uh, check along the side boards on Andrew Cogliano. It's not a good one. And somehow he he doesn't get suspended. Cogliano has a broken neck as a result of this check. Oof, man, the way his neck snaps there. 
I, and I know Colorado I, did I not, is some sour. Did I not talk about this a couple months ago about kids hockey? I know I said it to people uh, around here, and then I, it feels like to me there's more of these hitting in the numbers going on in all levels of hockey. I don't. I don't know what. Do, do we need the stop signs again on the jerseys? What are we doing? That's gross. That is a gross hit. Yeah. And it almost doesn't matter. Is he off balance or is he bent over? It's irrelevant. It's in the numbers. You hit him right in the numbers. Tough one. Tough one for sure. Anyway, uh, the Leafs are moving off to uh, round number two. First time since April 20th of 2004. Eliminating Tampa Bay in six games. Pretty good series. Pretty good finish. Gave you everything that you could have wanted. Um, for some perspective on just how long it's been, uh, good guy, our buddy Ian Mendez, who I'm sure is a great, he and Alex must be thick as thieves out in Ottawa. Uh, but Ian Mendez of The Athletic put on his Twitter this weekend. And I think a lot of people were doing that. The last time the Leafs won a series, this is what the number one song was. And this is what this was. And this is what that was. Um, Ian Mendez tweeted, the last time Toronto won a playoff series, my wife was pregnant with our first child. This week, I picked that same kid up from university. So there you go. It's uh, It's been a minute. Leafs first team in playoff history to win three overtime games on the road in the same series. Riley game three, Kerfoot game four, Tavares game seven, and your buddy, Mark Giordano, off to the second round for the first time in his career. You must be. Nice. Have you been trading texts and... Been yeah, well wishes. Lots of text. No, I don't want to bother yeah. playoffs. You got to shut your phone off That's in right, the playoffs. Yeah. There's no yeah. time. Just stay away. Um, let's take a listen. There's uh, there's no one quite like Joe Bowen, the radio voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He gets very excited. Now he's in a boardroom in Toronto while the team is in Tampa. That's a you know. That's a terrestrial radio thing that we don't need to talk about. But here was Joe Bowen with the the call on this suddenly legendary goal in Game Seven. Nice Six. back of the net for Tavares. Tavares coming out, sends it in a goal. They score! They score! Holy mackerel! They score! Morgan Riley! Mo, Mo, Mo Riley! The Leafs have won it! They're going to the second round! Do you believe this? Holy mackerel! It's a two. It's a double up on the holy mackerel, right? If you were keeping track at home, so the Leafs are through. Um, What's that saying? Act like you've been there before. Is that yeah? Uh, that what it was the only th- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what though? I there's so much pressure on those guys, the coaches and the players. I I get it. It did look like they were celebrating something more than just a round one win, but it had to feel like that. Are you, are you happy? Because uh, last week you were saying you're kind of you're with the Leafs. Are you happy for the Leafs or what are you? Yeah, I'm a big Leafs guy. I can't wait for the Leafs Oiler final. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, again, speaking of Ottawa, it's like uh, it's like Alex is in her head. It sounds like Ryan Reynolds might have some competition in the, the pursuit of buying these Ottawa Senators. Again, Ian Mendez of The Athletic reporting none other than Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg has aligned himself with Los Angeles entrepreneur Nico Sparks. The suggestion is the price may now eclipse a billion dollars. Sparks Group says they are, quote, not intimidated by the potential price tag. Who knew Ottawa had so much sex appeal to the uh, the glitterati of the world, the uh, A-list celebrities? Who are, you, uh, who are you rooting for? I don't know. I mean, in a way, I want them all to just combine forces and become yeah, like a, their own superpowers. It would be good. I, uh... Snoop, we know he loves he loves hockey. Big and thing. weed. Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, Calgary Wranglers are uh, currently taking on the Abbotsford Canucks, as we know. Rhett's favorite series setup of all time. It's a five game series, the best of five. And the Wranglers had the first two games at home. Now the final three will go to uh, to Abbotsford. Game one, Wranglers win it. Goal by Jacob Pelche in overtime. Game two on Friday. Once again, take a look see here. So as they play the, tonight? Uh, must play tonight. Two days off. No, no, no. 
game uh, game three oh. is on Wednesday. Not till Wednesday. It's a bit of a break there. Yeah, that's huh. right. Weird. Did you see him there? That's uh, let's go back to the dome. We'll take a listen here. This is uh, yeah. We, we, let her let her go. Little play here. Back to Matthew Phillips. Low wrister, hard. Off the bar and in. That's where you want to put it, Rhett. That was off the bar? It Just looked like foot, it knuckled. Foot and a bit off. Little foot and a bit off the ice. Hard, <laughs> hard for the goalie. Yeah. You don't like that goal? And, of course, it's a big win, so there you go. It's the uh, the dancing uh, the dancing at the Dome. Oh, baby. We got to put some clothes on this guy. That's gross. Yeah, get him a Wranglers, like, jersey on. No? Yeah. Let's start with pants. Pants of some sort. I don't care. Jeans, jorts, cargos, something. Cavalry FC got the home portion of their season going yesterday at Cofield. Positively lovely on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Cavalry would end up in a one-all draw with Valor FC. The lone goal off the left foot of Meyer Bevan. Three games into the season now for Cavalry. Three draws. No wins. No losses. They will travel and face the new Vancouver FC entry into the CPL this weekend. As for home action, next one coming up May 13th, they will host Halifax. There you go. Did you see Travis Kelsey go viral on the weekend? I Kansas did not. City organized an outdoor music festival. It uh, he loves he loves to party. The Kelsey Jam in Kansas City had Machine Gun Kelly, had Rick Ross, um, I know you're real jealous that you weren't there, but here he is. He's kind of slide, drinking the beer off of the uh, Lombardi trophy. Going to spike the beer can and then spike the trophy. Ooh. Now there's some debate as to which trophy. Is it the actual? Is it one of the mini ones that you get when you're, you know, when you're a player? Is it a, is it a gimmick toy that he brought on? It's a bad look. He, it's not a good look. To think that he that he went to Toys R Us and got like a replica feels like that's too much prep for Kelsey. Details are sketchy at this point, right? Uh, NFL draft weekend. Three of the first four picks. Quarterbacks, Bryce Young, Carolina Panthers. Um, now, you know, sometimes at the draft, teams will get someone other than a member of their scouting staff or their coaches or who, owner or whatever to announce the selection at the podium or at least, you know, have Goodell not announce it. New York Jets, 13-year-old cancer survivor Kyle Stickles made their first pick at 15th overall. And he was ready. Take a listen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodell. I'd also like to thank the NFL, the New York Jets, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Northeastern New York for giving me this opportunity tonight. Yeah! Atta boy. Let's get it. With the 15th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets! Select Will McDonald, linebacker, Iowa State. Oh. Let's go! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> I do love it. I love that the kid was ready. Because, you know, a lot of times, ah, oh, thank you. You're very meek. No, he was he was ready to go. But it's not my favorite, Brett. And I'm not sure if you've seen this one. This one goes back to 2022. The draft is in Vegas. Kyle Brandt of Good Morning Football from the NFL Network. Big Buffalo Bills guy, big fan. He was given the uh, the honor of making their third round selection. He had the Zubaz pants and the gear and everything going. Have you seen this one? I this have is a not. good one. If you, this is a good one. This was the uh, third rounder in 2020, uh, 2022. Looks like one of the Steiner the brothers from pro wrestling fame. Good morning, football. Nice check. Good evening, Las Vegas. Good evening, my brothers and sisters on the NFL Network. And good evening, Western New York. I find it perfect that the Bills are drafting in this city of luck, of chance, because you all know, and I know, the only thing in this world that can stop Josh Allen is the flip of a coin. 
So Mafia, mount up! And every other fan base, listen up! Chiefs fans, Raiders fans, Bengals fans, in my hands, I hold the most important pick of this entire round because this pick is the only pick who will win the Super Bowl in his rookie year. With the 89th pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl 57 champion Buffalo Bills select my man, Terrell Bernard, linebacker Baylor. Whoa! So... Nicely done. Nicely. He done. goes full wrestling heel with the uh, with the promo, and he had the the buffalo wing in his jacket pocket, ready to go for uh, for the exclamation That's point. On the beautiful. Air. I love that they do it. I do too. I love and I love that they have fun with it. Right? It's fun and yeah. enjoy yourself, Pete's sake. And speaking of which, Red, remember it was a couple weeks ago, maybe it was last week, where uh, we introduced you to Drew Maggi, the uh, 33-year-old ball player. It's 13 years, over 1,100 games in the minors. Finally got called up. Pittsburgh Pirates brought him up to the show Saturday. Doubleheader for the Pirates. Didn't play in game one. Was on the bench in game two. Gets tapped on the shoulder. You can see there. It's top seven. Pirates are well in front. Little pinch hit here with a runner on uh, on third Sends it to the corner. Little stand-up double. Not too bad, eh? Not too bad. Now he was optioned back, and that's uh, that's probably it for that story. But pretty cool, Rhett. Damn, pretty cool, cool stuff. That's awesome. Gonna get a thirty-nine jersey. Kelly Chase. There you go. That is the uh, that's the Pinder Report, a presentation of Village Honda. Detailing packages for your vehicle start at just $79.95. Clean winter off. It's it's time. Get ready. Book your detailing today at your dealership for life. Do it online, villagehonda.com. In the Northwest Auto Mall, it is Village Honda.